Hey guys, this is Michael Lancaster and welcome to MLXT Live Weekly. In today's workout, we're going to start off really focusing on accountability for our ball handling and we're going to use a grip med ball to start really focusing on some added resistance that we can experience and really start to just cause some shakiness to our dribble while holding us accountable to movement. When it comes to movement in general, especially if we're going to start off with an inside out dribble, uh, inside out a lot of times players will cut it short, they're not going to go all the way. And so they start doing more turn pounds rather than getting all the way into the movement that's required to really fake what an inside out fakes, which would be a push cross where that ball is actually pushed across our body. And so we want to have some kind of accountability in which the ball is actually going to go to a certain distance. Now you can start really feeling more of the middle of your body and you can use your eyes to make sure that it does that. Another thing that you can do is you can hold a medicine ball near the middle of your body and that can actually be a point of contact. Now obviously hitting something a lot, you know, you could say, well, isn't that a double dribble? Well, obviously, if my hand was there, I'm touching the ball, that would be a double dribble. But what's nice is when I'm holding the medicine ball, I'm not actually picking it up. I'm just trying to skim that medicine ball for movement purposes, so I know that I have it. But the bonus of that is when you actually inside out into the medicine ball and pull it back, you're actually going to create instability on the ball to make sure that you can control the handle. So it's going to cause some shakiness and so it'll just add some challenge to the dribble and of course hold you accountable to movement. So we're going to start off just working on inside outs with that medicine ball touch right there in the middle. Now when you do this you can take a couple dribbles in between but make sure you're being aggressive with that inside out and focusing on what that move would actually be as it relates to the hands. Now you could add in footwork a little bit if you wanted to feel the move, but don't take the emphasis off of what we're working on right now, which is just how well you're actually moving the basketball and finding the technique of an inside out. And while you do this working on the right hand, obviously you're squeezing a weighted grip ball the entire time. And so I'm using a four pounder right now. This could be a six. Whatever you have that's going to be a challenging your hands. And if you don't have something of weight, you can also hold something else. But just have something to hold you accountable. And a weight would obviously have the advantage of strengthening your hands at the same time. Now as we hit the left side for our inside out with med ball accountability, I just want to stress a couple things as we do it. As you experience the right side, you probably, especially if you had a weighted med ball, you probably experience a lot of soreness and fatigue of that hand. But make sure that what you're not doing is you're not flipping the ball underneath or flipping your hand underneath the ball. This, obviously you can still get some accountability, but you're not going to get the strength. And so right now I'm holding the ball by the side and I'm really trying to put some added pressure on this arm. Now if you were doing this four, 
two minutes at a time, obviously you're gonna feel a lot of pressure there. And then of course you can rest and do it again, but keep the pressure on the hands and don't avoid that part of it. So by just flipping your hand to the side, you're gonna put some good pressure on the hands and the forearms and so on. And so if you have your inside out, you're hitting that spot, you're focusing on being explosive to that. You can always do it, just one dribble in between. You could do it repeated. Whatever you wanna do is up to you, but make sure that you have good movement, that you're adding some instability and shakiness to that dribble, and now you're starting to get a lot of good qualities for your inside out, and that's gonna be something you can obviously use in the game once that movement is mastered. Now that we've worked on some accountability for our inside out, now we're gonna do a similar movement with a turn through. Now a turn through dribble is our ability to go through our legs, but keeping the ball in the same hand. And so it's a single hand movement and we're just going right to right. Now this can happen a lot of times on the move during steps or during drops. Obviously for us right now, we're staying stationary and putting the pressure on our hands. Now what's difficult about a turn through is I gotta be able to wrap through and then still bring my hand behind it and so that part of feeling for the basketball from this back side is obviously a lot more advanced than if I did step and my hand just has to go this far. And so when you're stationary with your feet, you're having to reach back and control the ball all the way back to the front. And so that's gonna be an added benefit to this as you really learn how to feel with your hands. Now when I'm in this position, I'm gonna have the exact same movement. I'm not gonna cut that short. I wanna be able to go all the way to that middle point and then wrap through. And so that's extremely challenging movement because your hand has to cover a lot of space to be able to get to the ball and you still have that added pressure of this hand. But when you do it, really focus on your ability to be aggressive with the whole movement. Aggressive to the middle, aggressive back, and see if you can put that on repeat, obviously. So this is a challenging one. You start to experience it as you go. But stay focused on staying solid with your feet in your stance and keep that medicine ball right in the middle so you're holding yourself accountable to more movement of the dribble. Oh, 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 oh,
Now that we hit the left side of our accountability with the turn through, just remind again, make sure you're holding the ball on the side and don't let the offhand start to creep in that direction. And this will bring some offhand awareness to the, to the game as well, or to your game, because if you're just random with it, and if you're not being controlled, you're not gonna get the same thing out of it. One thing that I see a lot of players do is they'll actually move both. And we don't wanna do that either. We don't wanna knock the ball out of our hands. And even if I did, I'm gonna be cutting the movement short. So really be disciplined of holding that ball right in the middle and then being able to work on your hands as you do that, staying in your stance and really feeling that movement. Obviously you're going a whole lot harder than that, but if you're disciplined on the offhand, that's gonna be setting the whole foundation for the accountability that you receive in this series as we get good on the left side with our turn through with that med ball accountability. So let's jump into getting on the move with bound footwork. Now a bound is literally jumping to the outside, uh, creating lateral movement, landing in a drop position. So we typically see a player do a bound, they're gonna pull off of their outside foot and they're gonna land in that drop position. And of course it helps to have a grip mat for this so you know that you're landing in an actual drop because that's the whole purpose of doing this type of footwork is you're finding ways, different ways to access explosive option filled stances by splitting your feet. And so make sure that you have some way of holding yourself accountable. And at least if you don't have a grip mat, something that's personally gonna hold you accountable to that space. Now we're gonna start off by how to access bounds differently. And so we're gonna start off with a through and using that through to get into the bound and the reason why little things like this matter is because usually players do a, uh, a bound through a, a turn pound for instance but uh, what I really want to focus on using your outside leg to pull yourself in that direction and so if I was going through my legs for instance and I go through the ball is already going to be in my natural pocket and so because the ball is in my natural pocket it's going to be extremely important that I learn how to move the ball and manipulate the ball because if I don't I'll probably just flip my hand underneath it and so if I was going through my legs I want to pull off of this outside leg and use that leg to pull myself over but what I want you to focus on is how much I bring the ball up from the natural pocket and then pull it back before I drive that's going to be the key ingredients here of why we want to work on different access points to get into our bound. And so if I started off going through my legs, I'm going to pull the ball back as I hit the pocket and I have enough movement on it to make that legal. And so as you do your through accessing into your bound, really focus on keeping your hand behind the ball, focus on how you're accessing your pocket and make sure that you're not coming underneath the basketball where obviously you could get called for a carry. Let's go ahead and hit the right side. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Now as we hit our bound going left, starting with that same through dribble, make sure that you are allowing yourself to play with a little bit of imagination. Another reason why I love grip mats is because I know this is gonna be the end space that I have. I'm gonna land my inside foot back, outside foot forward, and this is the area of the floor that I'm gonna control. And so then, if I know that's the space I'm trying to attack out of, now I can play a little bit more live, walk the basketball up at times, and really feel how I'm accessing that actual footwork. And so just have an understanding of space and try not to be random and you can get a lot more alive with how you're approaching this. But just a reminder, if you're going to go to the left side with a bound and you're going through, this foot might have stepped forward, but that foot has to still pull your body to the side. And that's going to be important because your inside leg is going to reach back. And so if you try to push off of this foot, for instance, you're not going to be able to cover very much space and that same foot you pushed off of is going to have to get back. But if I was to pull off of this outside leg, I freed up my inside leg to reach behind me a little bit and I'm going to cover more space. And so by pulling off of that leg, I'm going to be able to land right where I want to land. Now when you do this, it doesn't have to be as up, you're going lateral. And so you can play with how you're accessing it, but really making sure you're landing in a position where you can drive out of, being explosive to those spots, forcing your defender to try to cover space with you, while you're finding new lines to drive. And so that is a bound accessed from your through. Now I'm driving, you can shoot these if you want, that's always a solution for you. You can always play with the endings. Just make sure that right now you're focusing on getting to your bound through that through footwork.
Now that we've focused on the bound from a through start, now we're going to focus on the bound through a wrap behind start. Now this one's a fun one, but also extremely challenging, and it's really going to come down to nuances of timing. Now we're going to be looking at dribble placement on this. And so obviously I could just do a straight behind and then do a bound from it. But what's going to happen in that case, you're going to have the same challenges as we had with the through, is the ball's going to be already in the pocket. But what we're going to be doing with a wrap behind is I'm going to place the ball into the space that I'm going to head into. And so if I was wrapping the ball into space, I first want to make sure that the ball is going to hit somewhere on this grip mat where it's covering space. I don't want to get it right to my hand. I'm wrapping the ball into space and I'm accessing it later. Now this is something that you'll see players like Steph Curry do quite a bit as he bounds into the space after a wrap behind. And this is where it's important to discuss order. And so I'm placing the ball on the mat, but I want to make sure the ball hits before my body really gets all the way into the drop what you, or, or to that actual bound footwork. What a lot of players will do is they'll try to do it together. But what happens together is the ball is crowded to my body. A lot of times I'll have to bat it down. And if it wasn't perfect, I'm not going to be able to access all my options. But if I can place the ball first and then follow after with my body, now, even though it's hard to show slow, I'm accessing the ball and pulling it to my pocket as I'm getting into my place of my feet. And so if you can lead with the ball on this, that's a high level detail that will give you more time, more time to manipulate the ball, which also will give you more options, drive, shoot, crossover, and so on. And so as you focus on the placement of your wrap behind, using the same footwork to pull off into the bound, just focus on those details and see if you can figure out that order. Like I said, very difficult to show this one slow. So when you're doing this, don't train for it slow. Let's put some speed on it right away and see if we can figure out those details. Now obviously we need to hit the other side with our bound from a wrap behind, focused on our ability to wrap the ball first, focused on our ability to have dribble placement on the mat, making sure that we're covering some space, and then bounding after the ball has been placed. Now timing like this, what I want you to understand is critical, and it happens in a lot of different parts of the game. If I was just walking the ball up the floor, the principle would be ball before the foot ball before the foot. What's funny is so often when I was playing, coaches would always tell me the opposite. They would say foot first, ball second. And those are the principles that we're always uh, being told. But when you really study the game of basketball, we typically see the ball hitting before the feet. And the reason is because if the ball hits first, it's already returning to my hands by the time my footwork actually hits the floor. After all, I can't take my next step 
if the ball hasn't already been in my hands. So if you're late with the dribble, if it was foot first, ball second, this foot has to wait until the ball's back in my hands before I can go again, which will make me slow. And so, so often, most of the time in basketball, it's ball first, footwork second. And that's really important on this. And so when you do your rep behind, make sure the ball is hitting and then you flow into that space. It's gonna teach you a lot about your overall control. Manipulating the ball to your pocket is obviously your goal out of this so you can now attack. So if you can figure out all those details, that's gonna be important here. And I'll stress again, do this with speed. It takes me as a trainer a lot of practice to even come close to doing things slow because it's so hard to do it at any type of realism once you do moves like this. So don't be afraid of bad habits, don't be afraid of mistakes. Attack this with speed right away so you can obviously locate what those difficulties are in the process. Without speed, this is probably going to take you a whole lot longer to learn it. So let's cut right to the chase, fight through some mistakes, and do this fast right away. Now we're gonna jump into shots. If you don't have a basket, you can still do footwork, but you're gonna need something to hold you accountable. Now you can use an agility ladder for this, but I'm gonna show you how to use a grip mat to be even a better replacement, in my opinion, from an agility ladder for the purpose of actual basketball reps and training. Now if you don't have a grip mat, here's what else, here's what else you can do, is you can tape squares. Now you do not want this to be in a straight line like an agility ladder would be. An agility ladder would do everything right in this line. And so we're actually going to want to cover more space, which is why I like to have two rows. And so you want to be able to have two boxes, a center box, and then two more boxes. And so if you don't have an agility ladder and you want to tape some squares on the floor, that's, that should be a good step that you can take. But if you have a grip mat, they stick to the floor nicely and you can really get in some nice footwork out of this. And so we're gonna start off with bound footwork on the agility uh, grip mat, obviously, in this case. And so with bound footwork, I'm jumping side to side. Now we've obviously done the bound already. Now we're gonna do it in more of a strength and conditioning format where it's gonna be focused on speed. But the principle is gonna be the same. And so if I was to get to the other side, I'm gonna place my inside foot into the blue. I'm gonna jump all the way over. And so I'm gonna start off with my left leg. So if I'm jumping all the way over, I'm landing in that blue. Now that I gotta get back, I gotta get this inside foot to the circle, I'm gonna pull off this outside foot, which is now my outside foot, back over again, and I'm gonna finally repeat to the gold, and now I can shoot the basketball. Now you can do this in any type of format that you want in terms of range. But what I want you to focus on is speed the whole way through. And so this should be as fast as you can. So you're learning how to pull off of that foot quickly, but you're getting reps out of it. So obviously we're carrying, we're traveling with the basketball, 
because we're focused on the speed of our feet. So I'm starting off making sure I'm on the edges of the mat, so I gotta cover some space. I'm going back and forth to quickly get into the shot. And so that's where we're gonna start right now, focusing on the speed of our feet and the speed of our quickness, using a grip mat to hold us accountable to covering space in the process. Now, as we hit our bound footwork with the grip mat going the other way, now obviously we're focusing on the exact same footwork. We're just simply changing where we start. Now, this is really important whenever you're doing footwork. It's not as important on this one as some of the other ones will do, but it's always gonna change something. For instance, I'm always gonna have to pull off my right foot to start and my right foot again. So I'm gonna get two reps on my right foot pulling me compared to only one foot last time. And so if I'm starting off pulling off my right, now I'm pulling off my left, now I'm pulling off my right one more time, landing, ready to shoot. But now I'm also learning how to shoot when I have drifted over to the right side compared to learning how to shoot when I've drifted over to the left side. And so it's teaching me a lot about my body, my balance, and my transitions. But this is where I really wanna stress the importance of getting your feet down and up quickly for the shot. If you do a lot of skill work, or I should say quickness work, but then you pause before you shoot, you've taken away the entire emphasis. For instance, if I started off and I'm doing my bounce and I land and then I rest even for a second, I try to set up and then I shoot, I've just completely gotten in the way of my own training. Right now the focus is quickness of our feet and quickness of our shot. So the focus should be get your feet down and how quickly can you get your feet back up. Make your hands play catch up. And so when my feet hit, jump. Now make sure my hands can flow into that shot quickly. So whatever you do, don't reset it. We see that a lot of times in, in shooting training where someone will do something after the fact. So maybe they went through an agility ladder, then they do a ball wrap, and then they shoot. Now I like ball wraps at times, and I like this type of stuff at times, of course, but doing them together just fought each other. And so the purpose right now is to focus on quickness. So get your feet down, don't do anything extra, and pull up for the shot as quickly as you can.
Now our second round of our grip mat agility work is gonna be doing stomps. Now stomps is just our ability to do one foot after the other and the reason why we call these stomps is because we're gonna be aggressive with our feet. Now I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna start over on the right side, I'm gonna reach my foot all the way into the blue and I'm gonna be aggressive with that foot, followed by this foot hitting that same space next and as that foot's going down, this foot goes outside the mat. Now I wanna do that as quickly as I can but I don't want to float through that. I don't want to be passive. That actually has been proven with agility ladder work that if people are passive and they're not really being aggressive with their feet, it actually can uh, teach their body the wrong principles and make them more susceptible to injuries. Right now, I want to focus on being aggressive with my feet the entire way before I shoot. Now, let's just quickly cover some important details of order. Now, I want to be as quick as I can with that. I want to be as aggressive as I can, always inside foot, then followed by the next foot, then all the way out, and then I reach all the way across again. I have one, two, three. Now this is gonna be the most important part about what we're doing right now, is the ending. Because what a lot of players will do is they'll mentally rush. So if you put myself in this point in time, I know I'm gonna shoot. So what players will do is they'll go one, two, and then they'll quick hop out. Now we've already done the hop into our shot when we did our bounds. What I wanna focus on right now is being quick, but also not skipping any stages. So we're gonna focus on a foot replacement. And so if I get my foot all the way in, one, two, three, now to shoot, I'm gonna use this last step to control my space and both feet are gonna come underneath my hips to shoot. So that last part is gonna be a one, two, three, four rhythm. So I have one, two, three, four, and now I go ahead and pull up into that shot. So make sure that you're being quick. Do this absolutely as fast as you can. Blue circle gold is our space, but don't skip that ending because it's teaching you the power of principle, uh, I should say the power of poise, and maintaining those principles into those shots. Now as we hit our stomps going the other side, I'm obviously starting on the left now, which means I'm gonna reach first with my right foot. I'm gonna go in one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, finishing with that foot replacement into a shot. Now obviously you're doing that as quick as you possibly can. Same rules as last time, get your feet down and get your feet up so you can jump quickly into the shot, make your hands play catch up and keep up with it. Now when you do this, another option that you have is don't just hold the ball with two hands the entire time. If you want to assimilate some pickup of the basketball principles, such as when I might do 
this footwork to begin with. I might have put the ball down, this foot was in this position, and now I foot replace on the pickup. And so those timings do come into play. And so if you want to make sure that you are being consistent with that, now you can actually focus on holding the basketball in one hand. And so if I was doing that exact same thing, holding it in one hand, I'm going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now that pickup happens as the feet hit the floor, and now I've trained myself the same footwork, the same speed, but also giving into timing principles of picking the basketball up the dribble. And you can, of course, mix up what hand you're doing that with. So feel free to mix that up. Don't always have to hold it with two. So a lot of times you can hold the basketball with one to start bringing in those types of things into your game as well. Now our last round and we'll finish up our workout with karaoke with the grip mat agility series. And so I'm going to start off the exact same way as stomps. We're still maintaining aggressive mindsets. And so if I reach all the way to the blue with that inside foot, this foot comes all the way around. I'm outside the mat and then I follow by having both feet outside the mat. Then I reach back in, I go all the way around, both feet get off and then I have the same one, two, three again, followed by that fourth foot replacement. Now, once again, that ending is extremely important. Don't rush it. Obviously, we know we're traveling and carrying that entire time. So don't try to think about how many steps you're taking. It's irrelevant. But there are times and principles too when you have both feet down already and now you pick up the basketball still by having that foot replacement action. And so having the ability to do all of that but still get into a foot replacement is very high level footwork. Once again, hold the basketball with one or two hands. You're doing that as fast as you possibly can, seeing those spots and flowing right into your shot. So we're gonna do this obviously going both ways. Go ahead and hit the first side.
Let's go ahead and close out this workout with our grip mat karaoke going the other way. And of course, we'll just walk through the footwork. We've already done the teaching. Let's go ahead and get you some reps. Now, as you do this, make sure that you're always reaching in and you're focusing on getting all the way out with both feet and use your eyes. I don't want you looking up at nothing. Use your eyes instead of your feet. Make sure that you're actually hitting those spots. Make sure that you're reaching all the way out. Make sure that every detail is coming into play and you can even keep your eyes down all the way until this point. So when you actually pick up the ball, you're locating the rim now. And that uh, lateness of actually seeing the rim will be the most game-like aspect of this. After all, if you were playing against a defender and someone's going hard against the shoulder and you had to quickly stop, your eyes may not be on the basket yet. You're surveying the floor. There's defense and there's other things going on. Now as I do my foot replacement, now my eyes will see. And so you quickly stop, foot replace, eyes will locate, and you're up. And so by looking at your feet all the way until the end, you're actually playing into game principles. And so don't put pressure on yourself to look up because then you don't even know if you're being even close to the footwork. So go ahead and finish off the karaoke going the other way. Make sure you're doing it right with your eyes and get into that game shot out of the foot replacement to complete it. And that wraps up another workout with our MLXT Live Weekly program. Of course, we started off with some ball handling with the medicine ball. We got into bound footwork and how to access it. And of course, we ended with quickness of our feet. But the details here is really what's important. We got into bounds and we really got into foot replacements and poise into our shot while focusing on the characteristics of our, foot, of our feet and the speed of our feet in the process. Just remember, whenever you're doing a workout, it doesn't have to tie together in every single detail because your game needs to flow at any point in time. So in this one, we really compartmentalize. We focused on a ball handling series, got into something completely separate with our bound footwork. Of course, got a little bit of bound footwork with our grip mat, and then just focused on speed of our feet and the quality of our poise into shots. And so this is one that you're gonna wanna repeat again, especially with the shooting at the end. You just wanna be able to map this out in your plan somewhere and just put in some more reps. Remember, whenever you're doing MLST Live workouts, it is not enough to just do it with us now, with me now. You need to write down the ones you wanna do again. Obviously keep track of them in your app, mark them as needing more work and make sure you put in more time. Hit that pause button and spend 10 minutes on this particular shooting series or 10 minutes on that bound, 20 minutes or so on, but don't do the bare minimum. That's always key in the MLXT Live Weekly Program. I'll see you next week.